What's up guys, Black Hole Zero and welcome back to another video and today we're back on Pro Cycling Manager 2019 for the third episode of our Team Sunweb career mode. In today's episode, uh, we'll do the Canal Events Great Ocean Road Race, uh, then some of the uh, mandatory stuff in uh, the transition from January to February, including choosing the national team, um, choosing the new prospects for next season. We probably will have a new equipment. Uh, actually, no. No, we won't, because it was 60 days. Um, and then, most likely, going to finish... Uh, well, at least start the UAE Tour. Probably not finish it, but at least we'll start the UAE Tour. Um, we'll have to see. And um, also, I uh, invested into, uh, in some new staff. I've got uh, three new trainers, I think. Um, two modems and one groundbreaking. Because we had two traditional, and uh, with quite a young team, it just didn't fit in. Um, so yeah, Cadel Events Road Race, we've got Michael Matthews, Casper Pedersen, Zoran Kafanderson, Rob Power, Chris Hamilton, Jay Hindley, and Michael Stara. Michael Matthews uh, is already, like, tired, which is brilliant. But um, yeah, Geelong, or Geelong, Geelong. Um, I'm pretty sure I won this race in my uh, showcase event, at the, like, when the race was actually, like, there so yeah let's try and win this as well and for the final time this season the riders are in australia for the catalan's great ocean road race a race created in 2015 uh if my memory is correct with um again the exact same lineup we had for the uh the santos tour down under hopefully uh we can have the exact same result if we haven't seen, uh, sorry, if you haven't seen the uh, the second episode of the career mode, which was the entire tour down under, then uh, I highly recommend you to do so. Uh, we figured quite well in the GC. Uh, we we had like some good performances here and there. And um, following the down under, we have Michael Matthews on a plus one today, which um, is more than ideal. We're going to send Michael Stora in the breakaway if he's uh, allowed to do so to try and come back on Eddie Dunbar. Bonovo Grenard, who, oh god, the stats of Bonovo Grenard are peak. Bruh, that's sad. Uh, and Lachlan Morton is there as well. Following Michael Stara, we've got Steph Kras, David De La Cruz, Mitchell Docker. Uh, and then we have another attack that's Sejari Benedetti. James Whelan maybe trying an attack, or that's just going to follow? I guess I'm going to guess that's a follow because Ben O'Connor is not going to attack right now, I think. We're 75 km into this classic, um, still 100 to go, but the gap with the peloton has been decreasing really um, um, English. Uh -huh. The gap has been decreasing, yeah, I think that's, that, that's the correct word. Um, we don't need it to um, extrapole the, um, the influence of the decreasing. I'm, I'm just trying shake at this point. Uh, but yeah, we're like 320 up. 10 kilometers ago, went out 220. Uh, I think it's a good time to like check the uh, the competition. There is on this um, on this Cadel Events Great Ocean Road Race. We appear to be the favorite with Michael Matthews, the uh, in real life title holder who won the 2019 edition, is not here. Uh, that was Mr. Elia Viviane. Uh, is Bora here? Where's Bora? Uh, they do have Jay McCarthy, so. Technically, he won in 2018, so in... Oh, there's a fall. Casper Pedersen's on the ground. Casper Pedersen is on the ground. We've got Peter Seri as well. Jasper... Sorry, Jasper De Boost. And uh, Jasper Philipsen. And Jan Polank as well. And that's the end of the road for Jasper Philipsen. Um, who will withdraw from this uh, this Cadel Evans Great Ocean Road Race. End of the run for the Belgian. Um, I think it's his first pro season, uh, technically. Or second, I can't remember. Uh, but he'll only do one race day, and um, it'll be enough for him. Uh, probably will see him later in the season. But as I was saying, um, the competition, we've got Michael Matthews, obviously. Magnus Court Nielsen, who's got some very all-around stats. Astana, like, if you're thinking about doing a career mode, I think Astana could be a good shout. Uh, the reason I didn't pick them is because... Um, uh, I just wanted Sunweb, and I knew someone that was doing Astana, so I didn't want like to have twice the same career mode. Then you've got Florian Seneschal for Decon and Quickstep, Ivan Garcia Cortina for Bahrain Merida, Jens de Bucher for Katusha, uh, Jasper Fli well, not anymore, so Simone Consone, I guess, for UAT Memorates. 
Jens Kökeler für Lotte Soudal, Amun Grondal Jansen für Jumbo Visma, Sylvain Dillier für Age de la Mondiale, Eduard Tunes für Czech Sigafrede, mit also Fabio Fellini, uh, Reinhard Janssen von Rendsburg für Dimension Data, Jempi Drucker für Bora Hansgrohe, um, There's a thing to change here. We, we need a, a capital H. Yeah, it's just triggering me a lot. CCC coming with uh, then nearly home rider Patrick Bevin. Daryl MP for Mitchell and Scott. Geez, that's some good stats as well from Daryl MP. Is Bosnagan here? No, he's not here. Uh, Matty Breschel for EF Education first. Jürgen Roland for Movistar. Ian Standard for Team Ineos. And finally, Mathieu Ladenius for Group MFDG. Right, the break race is uh, splitting apart now. Eddie Dunbar, oh no, it's David de la Cruz actually. David de la Cruz making an effort to uh, try and uh, make a gap because the peloton is just coming in very quickly. We've got Michael Matthews protected by Rob Power. Uh, yeah, sure, let's have Jay Hindley protecting Zone Calf Anderson. Meanwhile, in the breakaway, Michael Stara is trying to catch David de la Cruz um, with uh, Ben O'Connor in his wheel. If I could like relay with him, that'd be brilliant. Uh, but he just doesn't seem very cooperative, doesn't he? Okay, 29 kilometers to go. The gap is 46 seconds. We won't go to the end. It's gonna be uh, a sprint for Michael Matthews, by the looks of it. 7.5 kilometers to go. We just uh, managed to catch Luke Rowe. There's another attack. That's Ivan Garza Cortina with Nico Dens trying to follow him. Rob Power literally just died. Ivan Garza Cortina has made himself quite a, a di uh, like a nice gap. Soren Kraft Anderson. Is going to uh oh actually Graf Zoran has like more energy than Michael Matthews. Um yeah Graf Anderson go in the wheel of Michael Matthews and Michael Matthews is now gonna pace uh for Soren Graf Anderson. I don't know if the Peloton will be able to catch us. We're gonna use the gel immediately. Nope, that's the that's the win thingy. 3.4 km to go. Ivan Garcia Cortina, Michael Matthews, Soren Graf Anderson, Edward Tunes, Nico Dance. That's gonna be your potential top five. What like, but the winner of this um, Cat Eleven's Great Ocean Road Race features in that group. So Anderson is now gonna take the lead as Michael Matthews literally just died. One km to go. There goes the sprint launched by Soren Anderson. Can anyone follow? Garcia Cortina cannot. Nico Dance is unable to do so as well, and it's a win for the best young rider of the latest Tour Down Under. Soren Anderson wins. The K11's Great Ocean Road Race ahead of Patrick Bevin, Nico Dent, Pavel Kuznetsov, Jay McCarthy, Matty Breschel, Daryl MP, Simon Clark, uh, Paul Martins, and Cameron Meyer. The month of January just smiles to Sunweb. They've won every race they've entered. National Championships in Australia, Jay Hindley won it. Tour Down Under, Michael Matthews won it ahead of Soren Graf Anderson. K11's Great Ocean Road Race, Zoran Kraft Anderson gets the W for Sunweb, who brings home as well the team classification uh, by the same um, by the same way. I mean, what else can you ask? Here's the classification, the top 15. Um, I don't think we've got anyone. To be honest, I didn't sprint with like the rest of the guys. So yeah, Michael Matthews finishing in a uh, 39th position, but he's done all he could uh, and he's done his job quite well. And then, uh, yeah, the group that didn't sprint. Chris Hamilton, Rob Power, Jay Hindley, Casper Pedersen. Uh, anyone with rowing apart from Jasper Pe Philipson? It doesn't look, it doesn't look like that. Um, let, let's see what's his injury. Let's see what's his injury. Oh. Oh. Ever, since when? Do you have a news about like him being injured? Oh, wow. He injured himself the fifth day of the year. I didn't see that coming. Right, so we've lost Nikia Sant. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, who was the guy already? Jasper Philipson. Mid March. Yeah, so. Tirreno San Remo is gone for him. Um, okay, now, next thing technically will be the national uh, team to select, then best strong rider, uh, the rider to follow, uh, and then I'll, I'll see what I do. Okay, 30th of January, we need to choose the national team we'll manage. For um, the, uh, the World Championships in, um, I think in Leeds, is it Leeds? Wait, let me let me just check the um, the profile of the race. Uh, where can I get it? Can I get it in objectives, maybe? Like, surely I can. Yeah, there we go. 
So you, the TT is flat. The road race, I'd consider it quite flat. Now, um, I've got the possibility to choose either Australia or the Netherlands. The Netherlands, I mean, it's good because I've got some Dumoulin. And also, well, for the TT, obviously. And also, I'm Team Sunweb, so I'm pretty sure I'm from the Netherlands. However, someone in the comments, um, and also me, really want to see Michael Matthews in the stripes. So, with that in mind, the national team will select up, uh, for the upcoming 2019, 20, uh, yeah, 2019 World Championships is Australia. There we go. Just some suspense in it. But no, I, I really want to win with Michael Matthews. He's like a rider I love. And I think, technically, Tom Dumoulin doesn't need me to win the TT. Uh, it'll be between him and Ron Dennis. So if you, I might as well like make Ron Dennis lose. If I do that just to win both titles, I'm the biggest bitch ever, but I don't care. Right. Um, I think I'm going well, I'm, I'm to simulate the Grand Prix de la Marseillaise because no one cares about that. And uh, I'll see you for the um, scouting. Alright, as I said earlier, uh, we're the 4th of February. We need to monitor the uh, U23 riders. I just said OK and I didn't choose anyone. Brilliant. Um, youth development. Cho choice of rider for close monitoring. So we don't have a lot of choice. There's only one guy that's between 5 and 8 potential. It's Johannes Bosch. Uh, sorry, Johannes Bush. But he just seems quite shit. We then have the opportunity to have Yuri Yazeski. Uh, again, doesn't seem great. Camden Verdicca, useless. Roland Bettini, useless. Candido Hello, useless. Zenon Poggi, not useless but without potential. Peter Michael Sara, useless. Ryan Baker, useless. I mean, not useless but again, zero potential. And uh, Nedzad Redzic from Slovenia. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna take a minute to find to, to like think, and uh, I'll see with like when I've made my decision. Okay, uh, made my decision. I've, I mean, I may have like made some uh, research about all the guys here, and like who would fit the, my team the most, uh, and who I would most be able to use, and. Um, I mean, although the, uh, I could take Zenon Poggy because I think he'll be the most out like all rounder guy, maybe around like 75 uh, mountain hills in time trial. Uh, I'm probably gonna take Yuri um, Yuzeski, Johannes Bush. Uh, I'm just too scared. His stats just aren't high enough. Yuri, I think maybe I can like have him 76 cobbles. If he's a seven potential. Then I could be like on a very good thing. If he's a four, then so be it. But yeah, we're gonna take Yuri Yezeski, um from Ukraine as our rider for monitor, uh, as our monitored, monitored, yeah, monitored rider um, for the upcoming season. Okay, I came to like a decision um, because I don't want like the crowbar to fly. Because uh, I mean, if I do one video the entire month of February, then it'll be quite quick. I think I'm gonna recall like some of the stage I like. For example, at this stage that doesn't like do anything, but um, none of you probably have seen that video, and it's all for the better. But like on PCM 2012, uh, when I was still doing like videos in French, um, I made a tutorial on how to win the 12 de Bessage time trial. Um, like it was just a sh like the, the worst video ever. Um, but I'm still quite decent at that time trial, and I've seen the competition. Right now, the leader of the Etoile de Bessage is Pete Sagan. So I've put Chad Hager on the uh, on the start list just to win the time trial. So yeah, you better do well. Okay, the first rider to cross the line for us is going to be Martin Tuzveld. Um, I still need to get used to this time trial, so like, his energy is a bit shit. 113? Sorry? Mate, what the fuck are you going? <laughs> what? Where, how? What? Wait, I mean, he was far down. Mad. Okay, Mattia, I see how it is. Right, 
Chad Hager has left the uh, start line in um, Ales, I think. Yeah, in Ales. I would have liked him to like be on a good day today. Sadly, it's not going to be the case. Um, Frolenga is on a great day though, but with his 57 time trial, I'm expecting nothing. Um, I still like back in the days. What you had to do was like start slow and do a climb at a very fast, like very high rhythm. But I don't know if it still works. We've got Joey Roskop here about to cross the line for CCC, um, who was second at the intermediate. Let's see if it worked for him. And I need to make sure uh, that I manage Frolinga and Chad Hager. Okay, Frolinga, you're going to be like 80 in the mountain in the climb. Chad Hager, you'll be like 81, 82, I think. Um, I, I don't know. M maybe I'm going to do this stage for absolutely nothing. It, it is a possibility. All right, Frolinga. In the climb, we've got um, Chad Hager 82. Um, I'm gonna guess his intermediate was like tragic, 21 seconds. It's not quick. Um, as John Kath Anderson is about to leave. Okay, I can actually really accelerate with Chad Hager here. Uh, like, really accelerate. Okay, we're gonna slow it down a bit now. Managing the yellow, uh, not to like overheat, or, like do too much with him. Maybe a bit too late but Chad Hager that second position only three seconds behind Matej Cataneo however I would take the virtual lead right now because well I was closer for GC than Matej Cataneo was right Max Valscheid has left the uh, start the uh, starting box he was our, um, our highest rated uh, sorry higher ranked rider with I think he got a third place in one of the stages I'm go just going to show you like what happened uh, but first stage Peter Sagan easily won it Valscheid seventh Second stage, Alberto Betiol uh, won it, making a 1-2 for education first, uh, leading from Seb van Mark. Third stage, Pete Sagan won it with Mark, um, yeah, Max Valscheid in third place. Pete Sagan is right now the only person that scares me, because he's got a 27 lead already over us. And I forgot Alberto Betiol. The Betiol could be very, very scary as well. Okay, so right now, Patrick Bivin has overtaken us, so that sucks, because I mean, I'm not going to be able to win the GC. Uh, the question is... Am I going to be like second or am I going to be third or am I going to lose by one second? That That's that's a strong question. It's going to be up to Alberto Betiol and Pete Sagan. All right, Betiol over the line. 36 seconds is gone and I think Pete Sagan has lost it. So that means Patrick Bevin will win the Isol de Bessege one second ahead of Chad Haga and Joey Roskop. I'm, I'm pissed. I'm kind of pissed. Let's let's be honest, I'm kind of pissed. Great time trial from Matai Cataneo. He started like first. And he, he finished first. Well done. Patrick Bivin wins the tour for one second over Chad Hager and Joey Roskop. Okay, well. Now again, following the uh, Etoile de Bessèche trend where I just do stages that I like, uh, it's the same for this fourth stage of the Tour of the Man, the Mountain Sage, Jabal um, Al Hagdar. However, Tom Dumoulin is very sick. So I don't know if I'll be using him as leader or Sam Moment. Um, we'll see when the times come. But um, yeah, that's your third stage of the video. Most likely going to be the last. Okay, the stage is on the way, and by the looks of it, Tom Dumoulin doesn't seem that, like, hindered by his, uh, by his injury. So that's all good. Sam Moment will be his uh, lead out in the mountain with uh, Florian Stork, uh, Chris Hamilton, and Louis Vervec. I don't know, like, what's the competition, I don't even know who won the previous stages. Uh, Matthias Frank competition, Juan Barguil. 79 mountain, are we good? That's a bit high. Like, yeah, it's a bit high, isn't it? Oh, there's only four riders for Dukonak. Solid. Is anyone able to climb in here? Izagire, okay. Uh, Pavel Sivikov. Okay, that's that's good. I like him. I really like him. I mean, I'm an, I'm an Ineos fan, so might as well. And Emmanuel Buchmann. Okay. Competition isn't big, so if I don't win with Dumoulin, I I'll blame the injury. Okay, so uh, I mistakenly sent two guys in the break. Uh, I wanted to like um, put them on like um, effort, or like no, maintain position actually. And instead, I I may have pressed attack, but I just didn't check. So because I was watching like the GC, um, so Nizelo won the um, previous stage. I think uh, Bajos won the first two. Yeah. So right now Nizelo is leading the way. Uh, or even as in his third. Uh, look at this beautiful red jersey, four dimension data. 
Jersey, like existing team jerseys on their thing usually. They, they don't win. But yeah, we have a breakaway. Probably won't go to the end. Uh, we just need to protect Tom Dumoulin right now. And I think it'll be an easy win. And we're at the very bottom of the uh, Jabel al Hagdar. We're only going to use Samom and Dumoulin. Uh, I don't really want to like use Chris Hamilton, Luis Vavek, uh, Florian Stork, all, like, on the, all them other lot. I think it's just going to be a case of like Sam moment. Um, Connor Sw what? Connor Swift is the rider for Arkea Samzik. What? Ever since when? Wait, let me check my phone in the meantime. Uh, Sam moment is pacing. There's an acceleration on the left. That's Yoni Zagire. Uh, we're going to try and at least follow with Sam moment. Um, oh, okay. Everyone's going. All right, we're following Emmanuel Buchmann then. Wait, uh, Connor Swift. Connor Swift. That's a very good acceleration, actually, from uh, from Yannis Aguirre. Okay, I need to take that seriously. He's in the exact same second as Tom Dumoulin, as, uh, Tom Dumoulin GC wise. He is. Connor Swift, he is. Oh, wow. He did draw Narkia Samzik. Fam, I had no idea. I had no idea. Uh, well, he appears to be struggling in the wheel of Sam Oman. Yannis Aguirre is uh, holding on quite well. It's, uh, Pavel Sivakov seems to be struggling a bit. 23 second is the lead for the uh, Spaniard rider from Astana. We're going to prepare the uh, next offensive with Tom Dumoulin as soon as Samoman uh, starts to faint. The other riders of our team are at the back, um, solid. I'm surprised there's still. Okay, I was about. To, I'm surprised there's still like 100 riders in the peloton. There's now 19. Viermo's struggling. Magnus, Magnus Gord Nielsen is still here. Like, this guy is just so complete. It's not even funny. Um, Samoman using his final um, like energy in the battle is going to give all he has to uh, lead Tom Dumoulin towards maybe a win. We'll see. Samoman, who just died, Tom Dumoulin takes the relay of his uh, fellow Dutch team, his fellow teammate. Warren Bargill is still here, Pavel Sivakov is still here. Tom Dumoulin is about to catch Yannis Aguirre as we cross the final kilometer now. Tom Dumoulin has made group with Yannis Aguirre and uh, Warren Bargill is still here. Warren Bargill, is he going to be able to overtake Tom Dumoulin, the actual French champion? No, he won't. Tom Dumoulin, the winner of the 2018 Giro d'Italia, wins the fourth stage of the Tour of Oman at the Jabal al Ahagdar, ahead of Pavel Sivukov, Warren Bargill, Yannis Aguirre, uh, Alexei Lutsenko, very nice climb from the uh, Kazakh rider, Sam Oman, Emmanuel Buchmann, Magnus Court Nielsen, uh, Karel Hnik, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, and I think Felix Grofartner will uh, will take a very nice tenth position. I mean, job done. I wanted to win. I won. That's what Tom Dumoulin does. Okay, so at the fourth stage, Dumoulin has now a 33 second lead. Uh, make that 37 over Pavel Sivakov. I'll simulate the uh, hilly stage. I'll see you for the GC and then we'll wrap the episode there. The final results are in for this Tour of Oman with Christopher Alvorsen winning the final stage at the Matra Corniche with Max Kanter taking a nice 6th position. Uh, the Healy stage has been won by Oliver Nazan. I don't know if there was any gaps. There was, but Tom Dumoulin finished in the main group 19 seconds. Um, sorry, 19th of the stage. Sam Oman lost some time, 29 seconds to be precise, which yeets him out of the top 10. That's quite sad. Uh, but despite his, uh, his injury and his uh, illness, Tom Dumoulin wins. The 2019 Tour of Oman, um, and what a better way to finish the video than with a win. Next up, we'll have the UAE Tour and the Omlop Head Newsblatt. That'll be for the next episode of the Team Sunweb career mode. If you enjoyed it, then please consider liking the video down below. Uh, no, consider liking the video and then get involved in the comments down below. Uh, if you want to follow me on my social medias, the links are as well in the description. You have my Twitter and my Instagram. Uh, make sure to download the World DB. It's keeps on being updated like nearly every day there's an incredible work done by uh by the the database makers and uh like you need to respect them for like the work that's being put in they're doing all they can to like fix some of the issues here and there and um yeah just download the world db it's the best database you will ever get on pcm i'll see you for the next episode i've been black War. it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today guys and goodbye pull up pull up in the gold i'm bleeding all them other man need feeding, I don't wanna go bombi Them I don't know what I do when I go from feeling Leading the pack in black and I'm on with the bear Snapping with the phone and dab, I'll stop him out with the duster Put him in the drip and sip, love buster